Hey y'all, today's video is about hair. I have made a couple of videos about my hair care routine in the past, but it's changed recently. I got a new haircut. I'm using some new methods, new theories, new products, and everything is working spectacularly well. I feel like lately I have had the volume and texture that I always want for my hair, that I've always labored to get in my hair, but with way less work. My scalp is more comfortable than ever, healthier than ever, and I'm spending less time on my hair and using fewer products on my hair. So it's just been magic all around, and I wanna catch you up on what I'm doing. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Hannah. I love beautiful things. This is a beauty channel, but I really like having fewer, nicer, beautiful things. The reason I'm so excited about my new hair situation is that I'm spending less time and using fewer products and I'm getting the results that I always wanted. So this routine that I'm about to share with you is kind of emblematic of my beauty philosophy or at least a large part of my beauty philosophy overall. If that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe and let's go ahead now and get into the meat of the video. So up front, I'm just gonna state something that I think is obvious. There's a very, very broad range of types of hair on the human head, and I only have one. I have a full head of slightly wavy hair with thick, resilient, almost coarse strands. On the hair typing chart that I've seen going around, I think it was developed by Oprah Winfrey stylist, who I think is named Andre Walker. I'll try to link everything that's relevant to this down below if I can. On this hair typing chart, I, I look, my hair looks the most like the type 2A, so the least wavy in the wavy section, and I'll put a picture up of the chart. I look like a 2A, but everything I've read indicates that 2A hair type, it's usually very limp and kind of flat on top, and, and it's usually fine hair, like really, really fine sort of wispy hair. Now, I don't have fine wispy hair. The actual strands of my hair are quite thick and I have quite a lot of it. I, I have thick hair. So I seem more like I would be a 2B, but in my opinion, my hair doesn't have enough natural wave to actually be considered a 2B. When I look at pictures of people with 2B hair, their hair looks wavier or curlier than mine. So I think that I'm somewhere between a 2A and a 2B, but with thicker and coarser strands of hair than people in the 2A category usually have. I also have all sorts of funny business, especially in the back of the crown of my head, cowlicks, a little bit of one right here. And you know, this is my natural hair color and I've almost never, I've never dyed all of my hair. I've done like an ombre dipped, you know, tips once or twice, that kind of thing, strands here and there. I don't think any of the hair that's currently on my head has ever been bleached or dyed. This is all just to say that all I can do is report back to you about how my new haircut and styling techniques and products are working for me. The further we get from my hair type, the less I know about hair. I'm guessing that the closer your hair is to my hair type, the more relevant the meat of this video will be to you. But again, the further we get away from my hair type, the less I know, and I don't wanna presume. So if you're watching this and you have beautiful, coily 4B or 4C hair, or really silky straight 1A hair, I genuinely don't know whether or not I'll be able to offer you anything. I just hope that this video is enjoyable in at least some way for those of you who are watching. Okay, so this is my hair. I basically went over a year, not basically, I did go for over a year without a haircut, only trimming my own bangs, sometimes to great effect and sometimes to not so great effect because of COVID. I think it was nearly a year and a half actually between haircuts. And a couple of months ago, I finally went. I went to an amazing stylist, Jude. I will link her down below. You must follow her on Instagram if only for inspiration. If you're looking for a stylist in the LA or Long Beach area, I can't recommend her highly enough. She's absolutely brilliant. She gave me this haircut and she basically prescribed a new regimen from start to finish. And that's kind of what I'm sharing with you, although it goes beyond just the products and into like little tips and tricks and recommendations that she gave me, subtle ways in which she kind of let me know that things I had been doing weren't as healthy for my hair as maybe I thought they were, or there were things I wasn't thinking about that weren't healthy for my hair that I was doing that I have since stopped doing. So I've broken it down to three parts, the cut, the routine, 
and the products. Let's start with the cut. I told Jude that I wanted a gentle mullet. No, <laughs> gentle mullet. Although wouldn't that be a good name for, I don't know, a rock band or a drag name? Please welcome to the stage, gentle mullet. Your first name would be gentle and it has the word gent in it, which is kind of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No, I did not want a mullet though. I went into Jude and I was like, I want a gentle shag. <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, give me a gentle shag. And she was like, you got it. Shag haircuts are all the rage these days. And I, I'm following a couple of people on Instagram who do these like gorgeous, iconic. Some of them are like all razor cut. And I don't know that much about haircutting and styling. So forgive me if you do know more, if you are a stylist and I sort of like bumble it or, or you know, don't describe something correctly. But I'm following a, just a few. I'm following Jude and I'm following two other stylists who whose cuts I really love. I like seeing them come up on my feed because it's inspiring. I just like having inspiration in terms of like shape and seeing how different cuts look on different face shapes. So it's, it was following people like this on Instagram and looking around at pictures on the internet that made me realize that I even wanted a shag haircut or the th thing that I wanted to try it was called a shag. I feel like there's this wave of the new shag that is going around and I was like, I wanna do it, I wanna get on the train. But I wanted it to be gentle. I didn't want it to be too dramatic, like too much short, short hair on top and long, long hair. Some of these incredible sculptural shags have so much dynamic range from short to long that they start to, in my opinion, edge close to mullet territory. Like you can have a shag that's not a mullet, but it it is like, it knows a mullet, it, it lives next door to a mullet, it's dating a mullet. And I was like, I want a shag that's never heard of a mullet. I have a horror of mullets for myself. I actually do think that mullets can look incredible, like a, a contemporary mullet or like a modern day shag mullet. Whenever I see it on Instagram, I never think like that person looks bad. I just think like, wow, that beautiful person looks incredible in that haircut and it wouldn't look that way on me. So I expressed this to Jude. I was like, I want to go the distance with this shag, but I don't want it to stray into mullet territory. And she totally listened and that's exactly the cut that she gave me, in my opinion. I was very worried about the shorter pieces on top. I was worried about there being too much of like a, a, like a little haircut on top of a long haircut, but obviously she did a really good job blending it and she really knew what she's doing with cutting the shorter pieces on top, even though I was really nervous. I'm so glad that she went the distance. I'm glad that she went as far as she did with the pieciness and the little flyaways on top. And I'll tell you why. Ever since I got this haircut, my hair has had volume, 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 no matter what I do. And I've been doing less than I've ever done with styling. And it's because of the cut. I am gonna get into talking about the products and the routine and talking about what I'm doing. But I put the cut first because the cut is what has changed the shape of my hair. The shape is the shape, kind of no matter what I do. Like I can enhance it, put product in it, dry shampoo, go a long time without washing it, freshly wash it, it's, put it up, put it down, you know, put it all around town. It's like, no matter what I do, it's not flat on my head. It's lifting itself around the crown of my head like this. And it's because there are a lot of pieces of my hair coming out of the top of my head that aren't very long. And because they're so short, they are lightweight. They're not being pulled down by themselves or by the rest of my hair. They're pumping up, they're poofing up. Like, look at all this hair that's short. All of this short hair on top, that's what's creating the volume. And then these long hairs are coming out from under here. This is my like totally unscientific and unschooled way of describing why, why my shag haircut is working for me. And of course this has partly to do with my hair type. I know that there's hair out there that no matter how you cut it, no matter what you do, it's gonna wanna lie flat or it's gonna wanna lie close to the head. I'm just saying that for me, this kind of lift at the scalp is what I've always aspired to and the cut has done it. Finally allowing someone to cut some shorter pieciness around the top to give me this shag that I've always kind of been afraid of has done it for me. And I'll put some before and, before and after pictures. I love these spectacular before and after pictures of shag haircuts creating volume at the scalp, like on the, on the crown of the head from the scalp and lifting around the face that I see on Instagram. I'll put some up on the screen right now so you can see what I'm talking about. These are much more dramatic examples, I feel, than, what was, than what's going on with me because I have a relatively full head of hair to begin with, but I definitely am 
experiencing something similar in my own hair. I'm experiencing the effects of sort of a, a like loosening and and lifting and aerating haircut on my hair. And what I'll say is that if you have hair anywhere close to my hair type, anywhere even remotely close, and you have always just wanted as much volume and texture as you could possibly get, volume, texture, volume, texture, consider a gentle shag. I mean, or, or a shag mullet if you, you know, are breathtakingly beautiful and you, you can pull it off. But like consider, just consider something like a, a haircut that liberates the top couple of layers of your hair from its own weight, basically. Because I had no idea. I mean, I'm 36 years old and I have gotten a lot of haircuts in my life and I enjoy hair and hair drama and I've tried a lot of things and it's taken me this long. It's taken me until this trend and then until I hopped on the train of this trend to realize that this is really like the hero cut for me. The cut is lifting my hair and I love it. Okay, the routine. My hair care routine has changed a little bit. I always thought I had super healthy hair because I never heat style it and I only wash it once a week or sometimes once every 10 days. And heat styling and overwashing are the things that, as far as I know, can really sabotage the health of a person's hair. So I was always like, I'm fine, I'm doing everything right. But Jude pointed out when I was there that I was doing a couple of things that aren't ideal for scalp and hair health. And then there are some things that I wasn't doing that help with scalp and hair health. And she encouraged me to make some changes to my routines. The haircut is the big one, but I feel like this stuff, the changes that I made to my routines and the things that sort of surprised me, this is to me the most interesting part of the video. One of the things that I was doing before, and I talked about this on my channel when I did hair care routine videos, one of the things I was doing was never brushing my hair, except for right before washing. And I did this because when I, I like this pieciness, you know, I like this slight frizz. My hair is in these like collected pieces that are sticking together. And when I brush my hair, it just fluffs out and all becomes really sort of smooth. And I don't like that look. And so I would, um, you know, brush my hair a lot, really aggressively, get out all of the loose hairs and everything right before washing it because washing it kind of resets it. And so it would wash and dry. And after drying, it would be back to its PC self. And then I was afraid to go at it with a brush until I was about to wash it again because I didn't want to deal with that yucky sort of, you know, brushed out staticky kind of version of my hair. And Jude just gently let me know that to go that long without brushing your hair, to just do it once a week, it's not ideal for the health of your scalp because your scalp kind of needs more exfoliation than that, especially like for me at the back, this part of it that I never see and never really like go at with the brush. I'm always like brushing, brushing, brushing the side. And she was like, back here, all the back of your head, it gets kind of matted down when your heavy hair is just like, you're like sleeping on it, your heavy hair is like lying on it, you're pulling your hair back on a in a bun on top of it. And it's like that part of your hair just needs to be worked out with a brush quite a bit and brushed out and exfoliated and ideally more than once a week. And she was like, don't worry it'll, the pieciness will come back. If you brush your hair like one night, by the next morning or like partway through the next day, the pieciness will come back. It'll naturally come back. You don't have to wash it in order to get it to come back. Or another thing is, you know, if you take a shower, the way that I shower without getting my hair wet is I just direct the stream of water from the neck down. Getting a little bit of water or, you know, dampness, humidity on the hair when you're showering, maybe even showering with it down and just letting it get a little bit damp but not washing it, that can bring the pieciness back too without having to go through the whole rigmarole of washing it or even wetting it. So with Jude's encouragement, I've now been brushing my hair roughly twice a week instead of once a week. About halfway through the week, I brush it again and I give it a good long brushing at night and then I, you know, just let it kind of come back to itself again over the next 12 or 24 hours. And yeah, it feels healthier. I'm aware now that I did always feel like I had this kind of like heavy mop of thing on my head. It would always look fine, but it didn't like feel. I would do, I was doing all the things I, I needed to do to get it to look the way that I wanted it to look, but it didn't feel healthy. It didn't feel healthy underneath on my scalp. It didn't feel healthy sort of like swirling around my head. And now it always feels much, much healthier and just, you know, like 
more life has been brushed into it because I'm exfoliating my scalp more with the hairbrush and I'm, you know, brushing through the strands more. Not all the time, not like every single day, not brushing the butt out of it, you know, but just brushing it a couple times a week instead of just the one time a week that I've been brushing it for years at this point. So that's a big change for me. And it's a change that I'm really glad that I have made. Another thing that I was doing that I've been doing for years that Jude, you know, wasn't so hot on is I've been washing my hair very last thing at night and then going straight to sleep on my wet hair. So I like sleeping on my wet hair because I, or I had liked sleeping on my wet hair because I was like, you know, rolling around on it at night, sleeping on it sort of musses it up and gives it a little bit of like volume because it's like crushed against my head while I'm sleeping. And so then when I wake up, it's like got the volume and the messiness and the texture and the asymmetry that I love. But Jude, again, talking about like the under layers of the hair and it, this might partly be just because I, I do have such thick hair, but it also might be relevant, you know, to a lot of people who have different kinds of hair. The under layers, especially in the back, like getting it all wet and then smashing it against the pillow and sleeping on it. Jude let me know, and you know, it makes so much sense now that she said it to me. It's just not that great for your scalp. You're compacting wet hair, again, like layers and layers of wet hair against your scalp, between your scalp and your pillow for hours. It can get kind of nasty. And it's also kind of a crapshoot in terms of like how the styling ends up coming out, right? You know, sleeping on it is not the only way to get the hair to like have volume at the root as it's drying. <laughs> so what I've been doing since I got this haircut is washing it earlier in the day. So if I'm going to wash it during my shower at night, I'll just shower a little earlier. Like I'll shower right after dinner or something instead of waiting until right before I go to sleep to shower. Or sometimes if I know that it's time to wash my hair, I'll wash it after I work out in the morning. So I'll actually wash it like during the day and let it air dry during the day, which is something that I haven't done in years. I'm telling you, it's been years and years and years that I've just been always air drying my hair on my pillow overnight. And that has changed. So I wash it while I'm still vertical. And then what I do is I put part of it up with a clip. So I've been using, I don't have it with me, but it's like a butterfly clip. And when it's damp, I'll towel it dry. I'll, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit. And again, try to like loosen this, loosen it up at the scalp. And then I'll put almost all of it up in the butterfly clip and let this hair right up my scalp in the back of my neck dry almost completely. So I'll go around like that for half an hour. My hair takes a really long time to dry, half an hour, 45 minutes. Every once in a while, sort of like scrunching up, scrunching up, running my fingers through it and making, doing this to it and getting it to dry. And then once I feel like this hair is really almost completely dry, and this is like a 10th of my hair <laughs> underneath. It's just shocking me. It takes so long to, just for this hair all by itself out in the open to dry. So once it's dry, I take another maybe like, you know, quarter of it down and, you know, put, the rest back up, like take another layer down. And then I do the same thing, another half hour, let that dry, you know, maybe one more time, another layer before, and let that dry before I let the very top part, the whole part down and let it dry. Doing this and realizing how long it takes just these under layers to dry, even when they're completely out in the open, it kind of makes me horrified in retrospect to think that the hair at the back of my head underneath, like close to the nape of my neck, it wasn't ever getting the chance to air dry out in the open before, that it was always having to dry while it was like covered with all of my other hair and in many cases like pressed against my head or pressed against my scalp. I think that maybe it wasn't really getting dry back there or if it was, it was like over the course of like two days. And so I'm really, really glad that I've become more aware that even though I don't heat style and I don't use a blow dryer, that I need to just assist my hair, just baby it a little more, take a little bit better care of it when it's drying. Like when it's going from being wet to being dry, the one time a week that I get it all wet. Because my hair is so thick, the part of it that's up in the clip, it'll start drying a little bit, especially around the scalp where, you know, it's sort of like out, not like all bunched up, but this part that's out, it'll start drying a little bit and I'll be like fluffing it as I go. But each layer really 
really doesn't start actually drying until I let it down. By the time I let the top layer down, it's a little drier than it was when I, you know, got out of the shower. But even it, it's like, um, I'm really like drying it in layers, like drying it in stages. And it's cool because it gives me a chance with each layer to fluff up the roots, to fluff up the hair, to really encourage it to have lift and have body. And I think that that is contributing to the overall volume that my hair is then consistently having throughout the rest of the week. The third thing that's new to my hair routine, something I've never done before, but that I've started doing because I've been prioritizing the exfoliation of my scalp again. And I, it's interesting, I was getting like, I don't have, you know, terrible dandruff flying all over the place, but I was getting like little dry flakes around um, like my hairline and in my scalp here. I just didn't really think of it as like a problem that I would like to solve. I just didn't really think about it. I think I just, you know, I would notice it every once in a while and I would be like, ugh, gross. I wasn't thinking like, wow, my scalp is really dry. I wonder if it's, that it's not being exfoliated enough or that I'm not, you know, that I'm using abrasive products on my hair and it's causing my scalp to flake. Like I just wasn't really thinking about it that much. And then speaking with Jude made me realize that, yeah, like I, I do want to exfoliate my scalp more, moisturize my scalp more and not have like this kind of itchy, dry and a little bit flaky scalp all the time. So in the name of exfoliation of the scalp, I've been using this brush in the shower I've never had one of these. It's silicone and these very scary looking spikes are actually quite soft. This is very ASMR. Maybe I should start an ASMR channel. So the one time a week that I do wash my hair and I'll get into what I'm washing it with in the third part of the video where I talk about products. The one time a week that I do wash my hair, I go in with this and I, I take some time. It's like a whole thing. I'm in there and I'm like, this, rubbing, scrubbing, really, really exfoliating my scalp with this all over. I scrub at it, I scrub at it, I try, I think about those flakes and I think of myself as like loosening them up so that they can be washed away and really just invigorating my scalp through my hair. I can't believe that I wasn't doing this before because it just feels so necessary to me now. I also think that it's probably helping to loosen any hairs that have like detached from my scalp but are still in there. I mean, brushing obviously gets a lot of those hairs out, but I think that using this also helps and it just helps in general there to be fewer of those like fly away hairs all during the middle of the week, like hair is just flying out of my head and getting stuck everywhere. So those are the changes that I've made to my routine. I'm still washing my hair just once a week. That's been my routine again for years and years. And I'm still air drying it, although the way that I air dry it has changed. But those two major factors in my routine have stayed the same. It's just that the way that I enact them, and as you'll see in a moment, the products that I use are now different. And the brush, I'm sorry, I just have these two tools the brush for the shower and then the hair brush that I'm using is this one. I This isn't a very expensive brush. It's like a bamboo handle. I just got it from Amazon and I'll link it down below. It's the combined bristles. And these are the only tools that I'm using in my hair. I've, I'm down to like a two tool routine. So it's a two tool routine and I think a three product routine is probably what I would say. I have a, a couple of things that I've been using in one of the product categories, but you know, in essence, it's just three steps when it comes to product. So two of them are products that I purchased from Jude at her recommendation. This one is by a brand called Cult and King, and it's called Tonic, T-O-N-I-K. And it is something that assists with the exfoliation of the scalp, but without causing like any kind of limpness or weighing the hair down of the scalp. It smells like cloves. It has a really beautiful kind of earthy smell. It wasn't very expensive. This is the mini bottle. It comes in a larger bottle, but the mini bottle I believe was something like $12. It's glass. It's got these awesome little raised bumps on it, kind of like a sea anemone. I enjoy handling it. I really enjoy the aesthetic of it. And that makes a difference to me, especially if I'm just using three products. It's nice that the ones that I have feel lovely and luxurious to use. So the directions say spray on damp hair after shampoo, rub into scalp, comb through, style. And I have found that this does have some grit and can assist with styling some. The main reason that Jude prescribed it to me is that it has, I believe, salicylic acid in it 
it. I think that that's what she said. It has some kind of exfoliating acid in it. Like it's literally like skincare for your scalp. I have sometimes used it on hair after I wash it. I've sometimes used it on my slightly damp hair or on my dry hair like midweek. But I usually actually use this before I wash it. I like spray it on my scalp and rub it in and brush it through, then wash my hair. I've kind of like gone back and forth. I feel like I'm sort of using it as a treatment rather than as a styling tool, but it can definitely work either way. The main thing is that I switched to new wash, which I had heard about. I've heard about it and I wanted to try it a bunch of times and I just, I don't know, I think that I never really thought of myself as having, again, like unhealthy hair, dry hair, a dry scalp, an unhealthy scalp, hair that needed to be rehab rehabilitated. I always thought of myself as having like just really resilient, thick hair that I could kind of like do whatever with. And so I was using these like volumizing shampoos, which were great. I still love that R&Co Cactus shampoo. I mean, it works beautifully and it's awesome that those kinds of things are on the market and it did give me the volume that I craved. But you know, I do feel like now I'm getting the volume that I crave from the cut itself. And I am aware that my hair wasn't very healthy. It like had gotten kind of unhealthy over the course of quarantine and it had gotten kind of dry and my scalp had gotten kind of yucky. So in light of that, the idea of something that's really, really nourishing to the strands of the hair that are gonna make, something that is gonna make the literal physical hairs healthier and more moisturized and happier. That sounded really good to me. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. So I got this, I'm almost done with it. It's a bit expensive, but just using it once a week, I have to use like a lot of it because it feels just like conditioner. If you've never heard of new wash, it's like a, a combined uh, conditioner and shampoo, but it doesn't foam up like a traditional shampoo. It's like, it feels like conditioner and I use a ton of it and basically put it in my hair almost like a hair mask. So I get my hair very, 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 very wet. It has to get super, super soaked. And then I put a ton of this product in from scalp to tips, really douse my hair with it like a hair mask. And then I take the exfoliating thing and I brush, 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 scrub, 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 get it really, really, really worked into every single strand of hair and I take my time. And then I rinse it and rinse it and rinse it and get it all rinsed out. And it's like really, really creamy. It feels like a bunch of creamy oils. It feels like a butter. I mean, it's basically like hair butter, but of course it washes the hair. I mean, getting it all into the hair and then getting all the stuff loosened up and then washing it all out of the hair leaves my hair very clean and it doesn't weigh it down and it really, really nourishes and moisturizes the scalp and the strands. I think the way I feel about it is it's, it's not as if it's some sort of spectacular, like technological marvel, you know what I mean? It's just like cleaning my hair with butters and oils that are healthy for the hair and, and washing it all out completely and leaving it totally clean. It leaves it clean, soft and healthy and not weighed down by product. And it's just one step and it's just once a week. I love the simplicity. I love getting the sense that I'm really babying my hair and taking care of it and treating it as I wash it. I'm a huge fan, I'm a convert. So that is pretty much it. And I haven't been using anything in my hair until it's dry, the next day when it's dry or the day or two after when it's dry. So I let it completely dry and kind of like become itself and take its shape, take the shape of the haircut without putting any product in it, except for sometimes some of this. And then if I feel like I wanna do a little bit of styling, what I've been using is hair powder. And I happen to have, New Wash is by a brand called Hair Story. I happen to have this hair powder by Hair Story, which my friend Simbri gave to me. She is also an influencer. She received it as a gift from the brand and she gave it to me. I've had it for a long time. I really, really, really like it. It's just, uh, can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see. It's like a, a powder, but it's got some grippiness. So it does help hair to like have a little bit more personality. And I, I'll usually just like let it dry and then spray a little bit of this just into the roots of my bangs to give them a little bit more personality and maybe a little bit in the crown of my head. And then that's it. I'm not spraying this hair powder like all over my hair, all into all the pieces of my hair. I'm just using it to do what I just did and like give my bangs a little bit of zhuzh. I also one time at some event received this as a gift 
It's the Mark Anthony True Professional Dream Big Volume Hair Powder. So this is like the cheap PPP version. It's not very expensive. You can get it at Ulta. This is quite expensive, this powder from Hair Story. I think it's like $40 or something. And I will say I've had this for a well over a year, maybe two years at this point, and I've used it relatively frequently and I haven't even gone through half of it. So it could be that it's actually pretty good value for money. But I really, really like this product too. And it is similarly, I think I'm almost out of it, but it's similarly, it's kind of like a powder that has a little bit of stickiness to it. And that's all that I've been using. I love hair powder, especially with this cut giving me the volume that I want. I love hair powder as like my one product. And so when I say that it's a three product routine, I mean like this treatment slash styling product, this cleansing product, and then a hair powder. And if it were just me buying my own, not using any PR or something, I'd probably just buy this one over and over again because I really, really like it. Or maybe once in a while I'd treat myself to this one, but I wouldn't have both. And at this stage, I don't think I would even have like aerosol spray cans of texturizer and beach spray and salt spray and all this stuff. I have a couple of those kinds of things. I have a couple of like volumiz volumizing dry shampoos that have come in PR over the years. And since I got this cut, every once in a while, especially if it's getting towards the end of the week and I'm about to film and my hair is like, sort of looking a little bit like it has less life in it than I'd like it to have. Every once in a while, I'll grab one of those and like and just like give my hair a little bit of an oomph from it. But I'm just using them because they're there. I'm not using them consistently as like part of my routine. And I definitely don't feel like this shape of my hair, my hair having like the, the health or the styling or my bangs having the styling that they usually have is dependent on those kinds of products, those like aerosol spray cans of dry shampoo and or volumizing spray. And that's kind of a change for me as well because historically I've loved those kinds of products. I've really depended on them to keep my hair like up and fluffed up and keep it seeming like dynamic and textured and having all of these different bits and pieces and parts and, and fluff to it. And now I feel like I'm getting that just because of the way that it's cut. And so I don't need to put as much product in it. That's been awesome. So that's it. It's very shake and go, much more than any haircut that I've ever had. And I also feel like overall, I'm spending way less time on it. I'm just doing that that extensive brushing and washing, you know, and exfoliating once a week, and then, you know, brushing it once or twice in between. And then once in a while, a little bit of hair powder and like, that's it. And I'm much more satisfied with the way that it looks on any given day or, you know, every single day than I have been with my hair in years. I'm just fussing with it way, way less. So I feel like I'm saving time and angst and, you know, potentially saving money on like a lot of random creams and sprays and lotions and stuff. And in that way, it makes it worth it to me to have you know, what was frankly a more expensive haircut than the haircuts that I've gotten in the past and to be using a more expensive cleanser than the, mm, I don't know if this is more expensive than the shampoos that I've been using, but you know, it's not a budget option. So I didn't get a budget haircut and I didn't buy a budget hair cleanser, but I feel like I'm sort of making up for it on the back end by using way fewer products overall and spending way less time overall. And that is why I have made this whole video about it, feeling very, very pleased with my hair these days and with my hair care routine. Again, I know that my solutions aren't gonna be solutions for everyone because everyone wants different things out of their hair and you know, everyone has a different head of hair. But I do hope that I was able to satisfy the curiosity of some of you who have been asking. I, I hope that I was able to contribute something to your sense of self-care and you know, maybe your decision-making about what you do next with your hair. Big thanks to Jude again for being such a talented artist and being so supportive and guiding me so gently. Again, I will link Jude Instagram down below. Please click through, please give Jude a follow and please take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 